when you go to a four year, you'll run into those guys that basically waste two years to then realize, you know what, I didn't really like baseball that much. There are players that are like, oh man, practice is too long. I'm like, what? Practice is, what does that even mean? What? So you're gonna go home and do what? You know, something I, I say all the time in our program when I'm recruiting, I say it to our coaches, we established this early on, Paul, this is an ego-free zone. It's not about me, it's not about Coach Andy, it's not about my pitching coach, my hitting coach. Like, this is about the players. Yeah. If the D1s don't maybe even want that kid. Yeah. What makes you think they're going to want you? You know, like, especially if you have a 2-1 GPA. Welcome back to another episode of the AOP Podcast. My name is Art Salazar. I'm the CEO of AOP. This is Frederick Arias, the pitching coordinator of AOP. If you haven't done so, please subscribe and hit that like button. We're excited to have head coach of JP College, Andy Smith, here with us. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, I'm pumped to be here. Just give us a quick rundown. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I play ball. Um, I'm a JUCO guy myself. I play ball at Santa Barbara City College for a couple of years. Spent a quick stint at Dixie State University, which is now Utah Tech. And then finished my play career at Biola University, where I got into coaching right after. Was there for a few years. Ended up at Chafee. Took over the program a few years after. And here I am. Here you are. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. So, can I have the first question? Please. Um, please. Tell me what the fuck is a juco. I have no <laughs> clue. I have no idea of the difference between juco. D2, D3, NAIA, D1, I have no clue. What is the difference between all that uh, and why is like kind of the caliber of guys that you usually get to play Yugo out of high school? These pro guys don't know anything about No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we have universities that are four-year colleges and then you have community colleges, which are two-year colleges. You're going to a community college to get a two-year degree and then transfer to a four-year college. In terms of the level, the caliber of player, I think JUCO is really cool because you see such a wide range because players at the JC level are going potentially to power four division one programs all the way to, you know, any other program, any other level. Um, it's kind of a controversial subject in terms of, you know, the levels and how they view themselves and whatnot. Uh, but any level of college baseball is competitive, especially here in California. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, I think now I have a better idea. Okay. Why, think think why JUCO, 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 two-year degree, university, four-year degree. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Okay. So that's a good pivot for like where I want to go now as far as for people that didn't understand, now they understand. Mm -hmm. So now walk me through why would a JUCO benefit, like let's say a junior or a senior in high school or maybe a, a freshman in college that wasn't like being highly recruited. What, you know, walk me through that process of like trying to get a family and a kid to understand that like, hey, I run Chafee College, you know, let me walk you through the benefit of what it is to come here as opposed to maybe a D3 or an NAI or maybe even a D2. Yeah, I mean, there are tons. And the way I recruit is I'm not trying to sell Chafee College. I'm asking questions. And the question I ask is, what do you want? What are your goals? Okay. What are you trying to achieve? Um, if your goal is to go to a, a, you know, a university, have a great college experience, maybe go to cool football games, yeah. um, or just, you know, get, get your, uh, your degree while playing some baseball, yeah. Juco might not be it for you. Yeah. And that's okay. If your goal is to play at the highest level possible, yeah. then Juco is a great route because what you're going to do is you're going to improve your value. Okay. Every ball player has a value. Yeah. Uh, that market is set by the four year universities, the college coaches. What are they looking for? And not everyone's ready for that level coming out of high school. Some people think they're ready for it, but reality sets in. And, and now more than ever, it's more competitive at those levels. They're shrinking the roster sizes, yeah. the transfer portal, uh, even the COVID situation, how long players were in college baseball. And so it's more competitive than ever. Going to a junior college gives you an opportunity to yeah. improve your value. And then the last thing I'll say to it is it's free for California mm -hmm. students. If you're, if you're a first-time college student, yeah. you go to JUCO for free. Yeah. Or if you're not, but you're still, it's dirt cheap. Yeah. And so it's basically, it makes a ton of sense. And, um, and now that you've mentioned that, I have a question that comes to my mind. Sure. Because you say that 
they might not be ready to go on a university right after the high school. Mm -hmm. What is the true benefit of a player when it comes to the development side to go and play for a UCO instead of go straight to a new university, maybe not the level that they want, but what is the benefit that you think is they get for go play for a UCO instead of go right into the university? Yeah, that's a great question. It's It really comes down to uh, you're going to get bigger, stronger, faster, almost naturally through the physical maturation process. A lot of JUCO players are late bloomers. I myself was a late bloomer. Um, and so you get a lot of that. Guys that just naturally are going through their, their maturation process, and it's just taking a little bit longer. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is, you know, certain programs like ours, uh, some other ones, my buddy Jake Hansen, the head coach at Mount San Jacinto College, uh, you know, really prioritize development. You know, that's speed training and, and, you know, the strength and conditioning side of things. Um, you know, arm care, velocity development, stuff like that, that we, we try to do a good job with. It's also hard, though, because we have a lot more players than, yeah. than a typical four-year has. And so it's an opportunity to compete, to learn how to be a little bit more mentally and physically tough. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not as pretty and, and glamorous. Yeah. You know, they call them uh, Juco bandits for a reason. Um, you know, and then, and then the opportunity to hopefully, if you're good enough to play and get more at-bats, um, to get more innings on the mound, to get more opportunity actually playing the game. Mm -hmm. Because how do you get better? You got to play. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of want to jump back at a point that you brought up earlier where you said about running into kids that maybe want to have more fun playing, you know, going to a college and having the college experience. Mm -hmm. What would you say numbers-wise, if you had to put a number out of every 50 or 100, that you run into a legit, like, this kid's pretty good baseball player, but their value is placed in that and not actually developed. Yeah, it definitely happens. Um, it, it, it really is tough because for me, I was the kind of player that I was going, uh, I want to play as high level as possible. Maybe that wasn't realistic for me. Yeah. That was where my, my heart's desire was. Uh, how many players I see that, you know, they're more focused on just the college experience versus that. Um, it happens. Yeah. Um, I don't spend a ton of time recruiting those kids that I'm not interested in trying to change their minds. Yeah. So I don't have a good, good answer to that question. It happens. I don't interact with that a ton. Cause yeah. once, once that kind of starts to be the thing, I go, okay, hey, no worries, man. Best of luck. Let me know if you have to change your mind. Yeah. And that's about it. And do you usually see like the same red flags where they all kind of say the same stuff or like their, their questions are usually the same? Like, yeah, yeah. I think the thing I get the most in that is, well, you know, I, you know, my parents or myself, you know, really focused on academics. When they say that, it almost creates this this barrier of, oh, JUCO can't fit that need to flex, which I, I think is is incorrect. I think the junior college route can be a, a, a bridge to a great academic uh, experience as well. Yeah. Because you're still having to take your math, your English, your, yeah. your general education classes that you need Yeah, at any other college. Yeah, for you're sure. You're just going to do it for a lot cheaper. For sure. For sure. And so... You know, when I think when you see a program that focuses on that, like how many in your time at Chafee have you seen make that jump from where you're at now to the next level and succeeding at the next level? So you have how many guys on a roster? Uh, about 35. And how many of them that have moved on? I mean, most of our sophomores move yeah. on every year. Uh, every sophomore on a roster has an opportunity to keep playing. We get them scholarships. Some of them choose not to. I have a player who, yeah. uh, you know, had multiple scholarship options, and, and he decided he, he wanted to go be a police officer. Yeah. He's going to go to uh, the academy here shortly. We're, we're stoked for him. Yeah. We, we celebrate that kind of thing, too. Sure. Some, some stu uh, student athletes decide, hey, baseball's been good to me. It's time to move on and just focus on academics. We celebrate that, too. For sure. And I think that's something that when you go to a four-year, you'll run into those guys that, basically waste two years to then realize you know what i didn't really like baseball that much mm -hmm. maybe yeah. i should have just gone to the junior college and like given that opportunity to a chafee or to another junior you know a junior college to find out is that fire actually inside of them man you, know? you, you said it you're not going to a junior college and not finding out how much you love them. oh yeah because it's not you know you're not getting your hand held you're not you know being told you're amazing and you have all this really cool swag and um the status and the, you know, that the aura of it, it's very different. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's much more, 
hey, I'm here to do something. I need to work really hard to get it done. Yeah, for sure. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, no, like I have another question about like the Yuko experience. Like right now, what is like the route that Yuko College is taking or are you seeing any changes into like the way that junior college are you know functioning mm -hmm. the last couple of years and they're like starting to change little pieces into like, yeah great question masters recruitment etc etc like training methods camps and all that great question um yeah okay a couple couple ways to go with that first of all from a professional uh scouting standpoint i think only one player was drafted last year out of a california jc It's and I've been talking to a few scouts. The, there's a, a formula. There's a metric. There's there's something that these organizations just the the JUCOs don't really meet it for them. They want to see older players. They want to see Division One players first and foremost. Um, and so that's that's kind of the allure. Is if you're coming to junior college to get drafted, you're you have a long road ahead of you. Um, the goal is let's let's see how far we can get you. What kind of opportunity we can get you into there. Uh, the next part of that is how is the landscape changing? It's more competitive, I think, because the higher levels are becoming more competitive. The rosters are shrinking, the transfer portal. Um, and I think it's a trickle down effect. I think when something happens at the higher level, it trickles down to the lower level. So what's happening at the higher level is the transfer portal is dominating the high. And the win right now mindset is very much, you know, at the forefront of everyone's minds, their coaches, um, They have pressure to win. Yeah. This is part of the recruiting spiel I give is if you're a head division one coach, you're expected to win and win soon. And you have a few roster spots to fill. Are you going to go with the high school senior uncommitted, you know, in the spring of his senior year? Yeah. Are you going to go with the junior college player with 300 career at bats? Or are you going to go with the grad transfer from, you know, Cal State Fullerton that's played for 340? You're going to go with that guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, you didn't get that guy. So where are you going to go to next? You're going to go the JUCO guy that's older, proven, more physical. And then your last you know, resort is going to be the high school player. So it's harder than ever for high school seniors to be uh, recruited. And so, again, to answer your question there, it's just created more competitiveness at every level, including ours. And so more good freshmen in college are coming to junior colleges. Yeah. And I, I want to pivot from that, like, When you're looking at those those guys and hearing those stories, because obviously you know you're in the in the junior college space, how often would you say you see D1 and D2 guys that bounce back that were let's just say freshmen that walked on that end up either with you or your competition or whatever? Like how often would you say you don't need to put a number, but like, yeah, is it consistent? Yeah, or? it happens all the time. Yeah, uh, as junior college coaches, we're looking for. Division one bounce backs. Uh, it's not a huge part of my program. We yeah. have, I think, one right now. Uh, we had maybe one last year. Um, but it is a very common part of the JC process. We're yeah. looking to win. We're looking to build the most competitive roster possible. Yeah. And it's really common. Uh, guys going, thinking they're going to be that guy, and they get on campus, and they realize, oh, I'm not that guy. Yeah. Or I am that guy, but the coach didn't think so, and it's his fault, yep. and so I need to go prove him. Or, yeah. There, there are a lot of questions, but, you know, The question I always ask is why? Why yeah. are they bouncing back? Mm -hmm. But would you say that there's there's usually a correlation between if you didn't get scholarship money as opposed to being a walk-on that there was some kind of, most of the time, lack of ability? Would yeah, you, yeah, right? good question there. Um, I've seen it both ways, okay. actually. So um, if you need to trim some of the fat of your roster, you might cut the walk-on that, like, you didn't really, you weren't really invested yeah. in that guy, or... You might cut the guy with the big scholarship because he's he's holding on to some money that you need. I've seen both ways. Yeah, but typically that guy is less likely to end up at a JUCO, a big scholarship guy, than a preferred walk on, than a twenty five percent guy, um, because they were brought on maybe as a depth guy, as as a favor to a coach or something like that. You you do see that quite a bit. Yeah, and another another point that at least for us here, I hear a lot is like, okay, I went that route. Then I ended up bouncing back at a JC. Do they regret it? Like, do most guys regret it? Like, in your experience of dealing with those players, uh, uh, like, do they wish they would have just gone the JC route? Or they all feel like, 
oh, I was able to and I did it, so it's fine. You know, like what what's your experience with that? Yeah, you you see some of that. Um, I don't think it's a ton because uh, enough of these guys are, especially if they've been at Division One level, they have a good enough head on their shoulders to where they understand, hey, this was the route that was necessary for me to get here. I needed to learn some of these lessons the hard way. Uh, I've seen some of that. I also have seen like, yeah, that was stupid, coach. I should have just come straight to you. Or, um, you know, same with maybe going to another junior college program. You know, we've been fortunate to have a lot of other, you know, transfers into our program from other yeah. schools that, you know, it just it wasn't the right fit for them. Yeah. And maybe we were the right fit. And then vice versa. You know, you're not going to be the perfect fit for everyone. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I've seen both. Okay. Um, let's talk about a little bit of Andy, the coach, or like Andy perspective to be recruiting athletes i know that you might have your you know talent wise standards and all that but when it comes to makeup or mentality what is does you know a specific attributes or way to think that you're actually find attractive in a player when you're recruiting yeah great question great question uh character first and foremost i i I don't know if that's something that as many junior college coaches focus on because, you know, we are the land of second opportunities. And I do believe in giving guys second chances. And I have taken guys that it didn't work out for them in a previous school because of a character issue. Um, and you want to try to see if you can work with that guy, especially if he has some talent. But uh, for me, first and foremost, high character people. Uh, I want to like the people I'm coaching. Yeah. I want to have a good culture of guys that care about each other, that want to do the right thing, that want to work hard, that want to buy in. And it's a lot easier when they're good people. They've been raised well. They have good head on their shoulders. Um, and then I, I want guys that love to play. Uh, I remember when you and I were coaching together, there were players I remember hearing this our first year coaching in junior college, being art together. There were players that were like, oh, man, practice is too long. I'm like, what? Practice? Is, what does that even mean? What? So you're going to go home and do what? Homework. Yeah. Like what? what? And little drag me little. off the field. Like you need to drag me off the field. No, like go just coming. Yes. Right. Yeah. So they had no idea. They had no idea. No idea. And so I, I really want guys that are enthusiastic about playing. They want to get better. They want to learn. They want to grow. And they just love being out there. Those are two things that I think are really underrated. There's some other components there. You know, the mentality, the toughness, the, the mental toughness, the, the resilience piece that we really care about. But I think those are the two that I care most about. Do you have any uh, process to figure it out that? Yeah. Good in the uh, recruitment, recruitment process, yeah. or what is that process so you can actually figure it out that aspect into an athlete? Yeah, great question. the The good thing about us and our level is we're not dealing with scholarships, and so you could bring guys in without having the fullest understanding of that, and that's revealed pretty quickly on in the fall just through mm -hmm. getting to know them. But it's about relationships. It's about having good relationships with the people you're recruiting mm -hmm. and getting to know them. And then you got to have relationships with their coaches too, or at least have some conversations with them. Hey, what's he like? Um, a lot of coaches go to games. I love going to practice. I think when you go to a high school practice, you really start to get an idea of who that player is, how he goes about his stuff. Um, and so it's it's little things like body language. What kind of energy is he giving out, out there on the field? Any, any kid can, you know, be excitable on game day, but who's the kid that's excited to just be out there on a, on a Tuesday practice? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's interesting. I didn't hear about that. That's actually I didn't yeah. know, like oh, really here's the thing, guys. You you probably see the same thing in your facility. The guys that come in like with some enthusiasm, they're excited to be here. Yeah. You probably see the most gains from those guys. Yeah. Versus just the guys who are like going here, I'm mm -hmm. checking my box. I'm just doing it. Oh man, and those are those are tough. Those are those are tough to deal with, you know, and like for us on this side, especially, you know, like when we're speaking with coaches like yourself and other four-year universities, understanding that sometimes the first impression is the only impression. And it's like, you come in here and you're always half-assing and that's how you come in and it takes you an hour to wake up. What am I supposed to tell Coach Smith? What am I supposed to tell Coach at X school and this school and that school? That's just the way you do one thing is the way you do everything, right? You know, and so... And then you have the guys that are kind of the opposite. Yeah, and... It's hard to maybe quantify it fully, but when you call me, you're like, you have something different to tell me about this kid. Like he gets 
after it. He's so much fun to work with. Yeah. When I have those conversations with coaches, I'm a lot more drawn to that player because not only are they talking about the player's enthusiasm, but they themselves are enthusiastic talent means. So that, that kind of gives me a little bit more insight to answer your, your earlier question too. Let's talk about like these two separate, separate, but that works together piece of baseball. We are a training facility, right? Mm -hmm. And as us, you got drive line, you got many other places. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you take advantage of kid that actually been training in places like, like us, not only with us, because obviously you got a relationship mm -hmm. with our, with us in general as a, as a training facility and all that. But how do you take advantage of that? And how do you deal with all the stuff that they get from those places? I say that many of these players, like they're getting preparation routines, mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, to be ready to perform mm -hmm. on a game, on a practice, whatever. How do you deal with the fact that you need to give them some time or what I would like? Yeah, great. What is like that connection and how do you think like not only on your side, coaches in JC in general should be dealing with the fact that many of your players are training at the same time in places like like this by at the same time that they're playing in your junior college mm -hmm. and your program and they've been part of your program. Yeah, great question. Um, you know, something I, I say all the time in our program when I'm recruiting, I say to our coaches, we established this early on, Paul, this is an ego-free zone. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. It's not about Coach Andy. It's not about my pitching coach, my heading coach. Like, this is about the players. Yeah. We have to have good communication with them because we want to be able to monitor workload and things like that. Um, and we want to be there to support them in their career. I highly recommend my players to invest in their careers. I am a private sector guy as well. This is, you know, what's really cool about my position is I've been in both, just like you have. Yeah. You know, we've both been in the private sector world and the and the competitive team, uh, you know, atmosphere. And so we kind of have an idea of what each requires. Yeah. I think, you know, training facilities like this are great for individual development. I think a, a program like ours is great for learning lessons that apply you know, on and off the field beyond, you know, teamwork and, and identity and buy into culture of being a part of something bigger than yourself. You guys have a brand. Yeah. Okay. It's not just, Hey, come here and get a pitching lesson. Yeah. It's, this is our brand and this is how we do things here. And if you're yeah. going to train with us, you're going to buy into our culture and our mindset with everything too. Um, and so I think something like that is really, uh, emphasize that in, in our program, at least I can speak for, um, I think it comes back to really good communication, good communication with the coaches, with the trainers, with the players. Um, and then it's, we don't cookie cut. We want to make sure that our pitchers, we don't force them to do this exact preparation or our care routine. We yeah. create love. Yeah. We, we provide resources. We, we utilize armored heat. Uh, our guys love armored heat. My guy, Ben Holmes, shout out armored heat. Haha. <laughs> love it. Uh, yeah, they do a great job. That's made huge gains for our pitchers. Yeah. Uh, we provide them, you know, throwing programs and plyo balls and, and, you know, all different things. But we don't force anyone to do any yeah. of it. It's we're going to provide you the framework. Yeah. We're going to support you in your self-discovery of it. We're going to give you feedback on it. And same with my hitters. Like, I, I'm very confident with myself as a hitting coach. Of course. But I have no problem with you going and, and working with the hitting coach. Just tell me what you're working on. Yeah. Tell me what you're working on. I'm not going to call him an idiot. I'm not going to say this guy i'm gonna say cool why why does he want you doing that yeah articulate it to me please can you explain it do you know what you're working on or yeah. are you just kind of going through the motions and then from there we can have deeper conversations so okay i want to build on that point yeah. that you know so is that something that you just decided to do is there someone that rubbed off on you that said you know what i need to allow this in my program is it like trial and error did you like you know because i we always say all the time we wish every coach had your yeah. mentality like i always use you as an example when we're speaking yeah. huh. that i mean you guys have one conference you guys are pumping guys out to different schools kids are getting better and the, i mean the culprit is ego you know and it's not to say that we know everything we're just speaking pitching directly mm -hmm. 
Like, where did that come from for you, for Coach Smith, for Andy, like the head coach, Andy, the college coach? Like, why? Is it your private background or what do you what do you think? I mean, maybe I I I think I'm intentional in trying to get better as a coach. Yeah, I'm, I genuinely care about my players. I don't want it to be about me. I'm not interested in being in the spotlight. Here I am. Yeah, in the uh, spotlight, right? Yeah, uh, which is cool. Like I, I have no problem doing this, but I'm not seeking my own self gratification or glory or anything. I, I care about my guys, and I want to see them be successful. Um, you got it. You've been at the big league level. Guys up there are open minded. Yeah. Just the evolution of data and analytics. Like there is an open minded culture and Major League Baseball, and so. If big league baseball dealing with the best athletes in the world can be open minded, and junior college X can't be, that that's an issue. I don't problem. Um, and then yeah, like my my experience in the private sector, and you know, I I was never trying to take away from what they were getting at their high schools or whatever. I've been trying to supplement it, so trying to help. Yeah, and like I I made this question because we always like being having conversations uh, about that that aspect of you know, this culture that there, I feel like there's a bunch of coaches that they don't really are open to accept this part of, you know, the whole new business and development process for athletes, blah, blah, blah. And they get like really defensive when it comes to, you know, let the player uh, do a pliability for his son or, I don't know, warm up with a water bag mm-hmm. before magic. Yeah. They're like, why you have to do this? Why you have uh, to do yeah. that? You don't see anybody else back with yeah. like, wow, we don't yeah. this is not this is not part of the program, blah blah blah. Or a kid that can come to the coach and say, Hey, um, I mean working with this guys on the way to just mm-hmm. for say, for example. Mm-hmm. And I've been seeing results. I gain, I don't know this X amount of back speed, mm-hmm. this X amount of velocity. And then I want to like, I want to talk to you and see if I can keep doing my lifting program. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a lot of coaches that have a lot of problems, like like letting the player take care of his own development process outside of your program. Even if the player is like, is showing you that he's getting results, he's getting better, he's helping your team to win games and all that. Yeah. And that it is like a, you know, a constantly fighting on that aspect mm. with people. Things that I say, like, obviously that's an ego component big time on this equation. But I feel like coaching is become way more easy to deal with people, communicate with people, learn, grow when you take that out of yourself as a coach. Yeah. Because, like, it's really joy and interesting seeing a coach like you talking about that aspect. Because I, when you talk, in the way that you talk, I'm, I'm seeing myself. I hear myself in your words. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I, to quote the great Kobe, right, before he died, he did an interview, and he was talking about, like, you know, when he when he really struggled in finals his rookie year, he shot six air, ball, air balls, and you know, I, I love this quote. He's like, kind of got to get over yourself. Like, it's not about you. Yeah. You know, it's it's not about us, guys. Like, we we provide a service. We provide an opportunity for guys. It's about them and their careers. And, like, that's that's what it's about. And all the egos and the, you know, sizing each other up, I, it, it it's annoying. <laughs> it, 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 that's that's what it is. It's an eye roll. Even on Twitter, you see different, you know, private sec famous private sector coaches hitting coaches pitch going back and forth it's like don't you guys have something better to do like, yeah but you have like some chores to do at home or like an errand to run like what are we doing yeah yeah it's unbelievable i mean it it, it truly baffles me that you you know some of the stuff you hear especially from college coaches and especially from older college coaches like we're talking grown men 50 60 years old that Hey, maybe my record, maybe our ERA, maybe our batting average, like maybe we should try something new, Mm -hmm. you know, like maybe, like you said, let me get out of my own way for a little bit. It's not about me, you know, and it's just something that I'm not going to say that you don't see it in four years or whatever, but like I, at least me personally, 
I do see it a lot with other JCs. Um, and it's just, it's so, it's just shocking to me, you know, that like. Yeah. What you're going to see is the best coaches, the the ones with the most sustained success, they have one of two things. They have that, you know, humility to say, I need to find other ways to continue improving my program, you know, or they've kind of figured something out. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some JUCOs around here that have done a great job for such a long time. And like, they kind of got their systems. They know what works and it's just a, a repeatable process for them. And, and great like that's awesome we're all trying to find that and this is the process of of some of us especially younger guys trying to find that process yeah for sure for sure and so i want to kind of go back to something we talked about earlier when we were talking about like guys getting drafted out of jc yeah so just tell me in your experience i know you said one guy last year Mm -hmm. how many guys though would you let's just say arms okay you genuinely would say when the draft passed that you were shocked that they didn't get picked up? Yeah, there have been plenty. Okay. There have been plenty where I'm I'm texting, you know, some of the scouts I know, uh, maybe in our area, that I know know who this player is. I'm like, oh, what happened? Yeah. How did this happen? Yeah. And, you know, I would say the same. Well, that's why you guys make the big bucks. You know yeah. more than I do. Yeah. Because uh, my eyes told me this gets really, really freaking good. And so what did you – throw me an example. It doesn't have to name anybody, but, like, for yeah. you – what does it take to, for you to think, man, that kid's probably going to get drafted? I mean, he's, he's dominant. Okay. Uh, his, his stuff is at a professional level. You know, the fastball command and, and the velocity is, you know, obviously 90 plus and yeah. uh, three pitches per strike. So a really disgusting secondary pitch, the ability yeah. to show a really quality third. Um, you know, the strikeouts to walk ratio, that's right. a really big one. Yeah. You know, because you, you see the guys with a ton of strikeouts that also walk a ton of guys. And yeah. Not even D1 coaches want that guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there have been plenty yeah. and I'm going, man, if that guy's not getting drafted, sorry, fellas, like time to start, uh, you know, yeah. shifting some perspective we have a little bit here. Yeah. And you just said it right now. And it, I, this is my favorite thing is like, when you're talking to kids, if the D one still maybe even want that kid, yeah. what makes you think they're going to want you, you know, like, especially if you have a two, one GPA. Yeah, it's it just, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it kind of goes back to the same thing. It's just ego gets in the way. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of want to jump back now. Like, let's say we have that kid. Mm-hmm. Let's say he's a, a junior going into a senior year mm-hmm. and he's that guy. He, fill, he fills in those blanks of someone that is just his head is all over the place. He yeah. thinks he's going to Oregon, but mm-hmm. he thinks ASU or it's yeah. just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. What are you telling yeah, that kid? Invite. Yeah. What are you telling that kid? Nothing. <laughs> In high school? Yeah. No, I'm saying like if you're talking, let's say, let's say you were recruiting him. Uh, let's okay. say he filled all the boxes as far as I mean, personality of what you want. Okay. And you want him. But just the, the, that, realis- that, the reality yes. check is there. Yes. Um, hey, who are you talking to? Yeah. Yeah. You know, again, it's, it's very question. I'm not here to tell, you know, or convince. It's, it's asking questions. Okay. And, and I think the best recruiting is getting them to come to the conclusion that you're, you're hoping they come to. Um, and if you do it right, that'll happen naturally. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't happen, then it wasn't the right fit to begin with. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going, who are you talking to? Okay. No, I oh, see you. Oh, cool. Which coach, which coach I know, I know. Is it coach Peraza? Is it coach Jaffe? Like right. who, which one? Oh, uh, well, so-and-so emailed me. I'm going out for a visit. Oh, cool. Like it is an official visit. Are they paying? Uh, no. Well, it's a camp. Oh, cool. So like they personally invited well, no, it's uh, just their prospect camp. How many guys are going to be at that? Oh, I'm not sure. Okay. Hey, best of luck. Let me know how it goes. Yeah. I'll follow up with you after. Yeah. Hey, how'd the camp go? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it starts to reveal itself over time. You just have to know which questions to ask, and um, they start to get an idea. And some of them never really do. Yeah. And those guys somehow get a walk-on spot at some you know mid-major. And yeah. Then maybe they just kind of fizzle out or – Maybe they end up better at a junior college in Orange County, even though they live out here, because you know that's where the the big boys play. I guess. And, yeah. You know, you got to go to Orange County if you yes. want to play ball, right? Uh, and a lot of respect for those programs; yeah. they do a great job. But you know, I see players from out here, you know, in the Inland Empire, want to go out there, thinking that's the only option for them if they want to play. There. And why do you think that is? Oh, optics. I think that's optics. Yeah. You know, they played a great conference. The Orange Empire is a great conference. Yes. Uh, facilities. Oh, most of those schools have really cool facilities and. Um, you know, I think the tradition of those programs is, is very rich and, and long standing. And so, 
you know, these players, someone tells them, oh, you got to go to someone tells them. you got to go out there to play. It's like, oh, OK, all right. Yeah. And then that kid ends up coming to Chafee his sophomore year. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that I, I would say I've even seen with guys that I know. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Quite. It's all good. I don't I never take it personally. I'm not like, why wouldn't you come and play for me? It's like, yeah, because I hey, yeah, yeah. hope you do really well. Yeah. I hope you do really well. Yeah. No, I, I, I get it. And I, I'm sensing now why. The success is happening and you're building a culture because like you're saying, you ask questions, you're not trying to be like a salesman. You're not trying to like force your ideas. You have no ego. This is my place. This is what we offer. Right. And that's like the approach that that's working. You know what I mean? That you're, you're establishing yourself in Southern California and in an empire. I appreciate it. Yeah. And you know, and I think that's, it's something that, you know, I, I remember the, if you've seen Wolf of Wall Street, most, of uh, you know, sell me this pen, right? Well, I, I actually ended up watching a Jordan Belfort uh, interview he gave about that concept that, yeah. you know, it's not about actually selling someone a pen. It's like asking questions. Well, how long have you been in the market for a pen? Yeah. What kind of pens have you used? What do you need it for? Do you feel the need? Mm-hmm. If you don't feel the need, you're not going to sell this dude a pen. Yeah. If you feel the need, they need to see that. Yeah. If you just force that upon them, they're going to be put off by that. We all are, sure. you know, you walk into a store, Hey, what can I help you find today? Yeah. You know, uh, you know, we have a great sale. That... I'm just looking, man. Chill. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Versus a more natural, like, Hey, what's going on, man? What, yeah. what are you up to today? And like just building up that organic connection. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of interesting. The interesting is very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Like when you, you stick to that process, would you say though, that let's say there's a guy you really want. Mm-hmm. Like where you're like, eh, maybe let me like ignore that. Like, does that ever happen to you? Or like, I mean, you know, not to say that you're breaking your, your morals, but like, Hey, do you, do you ever change based on the, on the kit? You know, like not really. I think the most I'll do is, you know, I never get, and I'm really, really clear about this. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe too clear about this. Is, yeah. Hey, I, you are guaranteed nothing here. Yeah. Fair opportunity. I yeah. promise you a fair opportunity. I promise you. It can be a great experience for you. Yeah. I'm not promising you a D1 scholarship. I'm not promising you a starting role. You got to earn that. What I'll say that maybe my highest echelon recruits is, so this is what I believe, and I believe this is true, and I believe this applies to you. However, I'll say this. If you're not starting for us, something went really wrong. Yeah. There's no reason, there's no reason you shouldn't be starting for us next mm-hmm. year. And the question is, why are you coming here? And what do we need to work on? Because there's a reason, there's there's a deficiency here that we need to improve upon. Yeah. And so, like, let's focus on that. Yeah. I'm like, all the other stuff's going to fall into place. But that's the farthest I'll go. Yeah. Um, but, no, it's it's the same. Because even the, the highest level recruits that you want, their brains are still wired the same way. We're still asking ourselves, do we fill the need? Yeah. And, and you know, we're just going to be ourselves and I'm going to be myself. And if I'm the right fit for that player, great. Yeah. If I'm not. I'm not going to be for everyone. Yeah, it's okay. For sure. Yeah, I think when I'm talking to to guys and, you know, let's say maybe guys that want to take a gap year where it's just, hey, understanding where you're at. And like you said, these are my deficiencies. Mm -hmm. I need to accept them. Yep. And what what is my plan of attack to fix them? Mm -hmm. And it could even be the kid doesn't have to be even JC ready, you know, where it's like, hey, I'm throwing 74 miles an hour, (laughs) but I don't want to give up. Yeah. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. How many kids have we seen just in this short time that, you know, that commitment, like you see, you're saying about buying into X, Y, and Z in your program that, hey, doing those things, coming in, whether you're a top recruit or the bottom of the barrel, right? I think just buying into that, that application of, hey, this is the way we do things here. Yeah. It's usually going to end up in a, in a good spot for you, right? You know, I, I think so. I think you're, you're going to, Learn how to be excellent in everything you do. Yeah. Or at least understand the importance of that. You're going to learn to be a part of something bigger than yourself, which is going to actually improve your performance because it takes the spotlight off the individual, the spotlight off the individual. Uh, you're going to learn, hopefully, you know, what we try to do is you're going to learn some things that are actually going to help you in the workplace. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about how to communicate well, how to, how to speak to a crowd. We're going to talk about how to um, interview for, for jobs. We're yeah. going to talk about different things that I, I hope make some kind of positive impact on these guys that go beyond the baseball field. For sure. You know, we had a situation real quick. I'll say we had a situation with a restaurant, um, you know, a complaint on a couple of our guys and I was pissed. I was really upset. 
And then, you know what, this is an opportunity for us to talk about how do you, how should you operate at a restaurant? How should you conduct yourself? When the server comes around, look her in the eye, say please and thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, say yes, no, leave a good tip. Okay. The, things like that, things yeah. of that nature. So hopefully they take something away from our program that actually benefits them down the road. For sure. What are your thoughts on that? I love it. Yeah. Love it. That is, that is something that you don't find that often in the baseball world overall, not only in the college level. Mm -hmm. You don't see that often, even in the pro, like there's not many places, organizations, or people that actually can really see the value behind all that aspects. Uh, but yeah, love it. I really, really happy to like see that in the JUCO war, we have coaches like you that a lot of these kids are going to have the pleasure to go play in your program, be part of your culture and all that. I appreciate it, Benji. Yeah, so, you know, to, to wrap it up, you know, if you're a guy out there that's maybe not being recruited too much and you're in the Southern California area and Coach Smith has reached out, I think now after hearing this conversation, maybe you're going to start getting some guys that realize Chafee's the place for them and not what maybe the the reputation was 15 years ago. I'm not even going to say in the recent, mm -hmm. you know, and understanding that it's a place that, you know, you can move on and become a better man. We're going to keep the train rolling with or without him, but we'd love to have him. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for coming on to the AOP podcast, man. We appreciate it. And uh, we wish you guys a lot of success this year. Appreciate it, man. It was fun. Yeah. Good time, guys. Thanks, man. Do it again. I know, boy. Awesome. Oh,